It, listen, we got some good news today, Steve. Okay. okay, so don't rain on the parade all right. too much, all right? Yes. The deal, the framework of a deal. But are we in an earnings recession? No, we're no. not. Okay, so we're having a real slowdown. I think the quarter we just passed, 4Q, probably when all is said and done, will come in nearly at 18% year to year growth. That sounds good. It, yes, uh, and it's a lot more than expected. And guess what? We have seen earnings for the quarter that's just been reported more than analysts have expected, rise more than analysts have expected in every single quarter since 3Q 2009. Now that we're getting to the point where earnings are slowing to low single digits or mid single digits, and analysts cut their estimates too far, which has happened again in every single quarter since 3Q 2009, you will see it widely cited, ah, now earnings are falling. The estimates say so. Well, if those estimates have been too conservative in every single quarter since mid-2009 and most of the time mm -hmm. before, don't you think that those estimates are understated now? They are. Is that because, and I know you've got a, a very good and deep research team at Citigroup overall, your corporate parent, but are you saying that they've gotten it wrong again or that companies are sandbagging? Well, this is exactly how it is. When you take a look at earnings estimates out into the future, uh, they tend to show too much growth. Those growth rates come down. The end of the year, 10% EPS growth may in fact be too high, but they're partly too high, again, because the near-term estimates are too low. So the reality is the American economy, the world economy is moderating uh, for a lot of reasons, nine rate hikes. Uh, we will see a slowdown in corporate profit growth mm -hmm. with it. Uh, but I think all of the estimates are going to show that we're going to end up with something like a 5 to 6% EPS gain for the quarter we're in right that's now. Not, that's not terrible. No, it isn't. We right? would have been happy with that a couple of years ago. I want to switch gears a little bit, though, because speaking of bringing down estimates and, and 5%, kind of, you must be precognitive, because we spoke with the CIO of Vanguard yesterday at a conference down in Florida. Right. And... They're taking down their expectations for the next decade. I want you to listen to this and then respond. Okay. If we look forward for the next 10 years, our expectations around U.S. equity markets is about 5% median annualized return over the next decade. That's lower. That's so you lower. lowered the numbers. Five this years. For 10 years. That's for 10 years. years. The next 10 years, 5% annualized. Five years ago, we'd have been somewhere around 8%. So our expectations have clearly come down when it comes to the U.S. equity market expectations. Eight to five doesn't sound like a lot. We're going to show our viewers how much it matters, though, coming up after this interview, Stephen. You guys were in front of that. You've done the same thing. Well, we think our estimates for 10-year-ahead U.S. equity returns are coming up to about 5%. They've long Whether you come up or go down, down to five, there. you're still at five. Yeah, but, that, but that's the whole Five doesn't point. sound good, though. No, it doesn't sound good. It's just historically well below long-term average returns. What it is is averaging in one to two recessions within a 10-year window of time. When you're nine years deep into an economic recovery, when profits have tripled from the low point 10 years ago, and you average in uh, those declines, it's a conservative way of estimating future returns. We think that that's the right way to look at it. There's a lot of the world that isn't nine years deep mm -hmm. into a recovery where returns, actual price appreciation, has been far below. Uh, you're taking a look at emerging market equities at 12 times earnings yeah. uh, without the economic boom behind it, uh, where re our return estimates are a lot higher. There are fixed income returns, which can come very, very close to long-term U.S. equity returns at this point. But again, that's not the outlook immediately ahead. I'm sure we've had a very big bounce back, and when the news keeps getting you there. But I do think that we see a lot of caution in the near term and, and a lot of exaggerated arguments, including the idea that earnings are already falling. What you're saying is really important, Steve, and I would expect nothing less, by the way, because here's, if, if somebody came up to me and they said, I can get you 3 to 4% risk-free, right. maybe even tax-free on like a municipal bond, well, we're going to give you 5% on equities, but you got to suffer through that. Right. The, bond, the bond angle, while boring, doesn't yes. sound so bad. So look, if you take a look at world assets, and you have a whole mix of things that you can buy from the whole world, you know, we're fully invested, neutral again, raised it a bit in U.S. stocks, but we're overweight U.S. bonds in a world in which bond yields are incredibly low, particularly in developed markets, where yields are far behind the United States, where there hasn't been nine mm -hmm. rate hikes. The front end of the U.S. yield curve is attractive. You can get over 3%, again, with the Fed funds rate uh, peaking at 2.5%. Uh, 
Uh, in the municipal bond yeah. market, you can get much stronger returns. And across the risk spectrum, uh, we have our overweights in the United States. Does the U.S. economy go into a recession this year, yes or no? No. No. I like it.